Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you 12 September, ECB day, here we are. Ring the bell. Not a whole lot to talk about this morning. ECB now is um, six hours away. We do have uh, rates in Turkey also just before that, noontime uh, Swiss time. Um, we won't be fooling around in Turkey too much. Um, I don't know. Erdogan now wants rate cuts. There's an expectation but for like 250 to 300 points. Um, some people are saying 400. Uh, we we don't know what's going on in Turkey these days, uh, and we'll have to see. Uh, we'll have to see what's going on. Dollar Turkey will move, and so if you're brave and you like that shit, uh, let's just be ready. Uh, Twelve o'clock Swiss time. Uh, moving on to more normal currency pairs and stuff. Let's take a look at these stocks here. Uh, thirteen thirteen. We sold last night at the at the close, thirteen oh two. We stopped out uh, just above ten here. Um, I don't know what the hell is going on in stocks. You can see we're getting close to the all time highs here. Uh, we are looking for disappointment from the ECB, so we'll have to see how this comes together. Uh, all time highs with thirty twenty nine. 3013 now, so getting pretty close to that. Don't know what to do with this. Uh, we had a we had a plan to sell at 3,000, thinking that was going to be the stretch. Uh, turns out went up another 20 handles. I believe yeah, the high today is 3020. Not sure what to do with this here, so we're just gonna we're just gonna put it down. If he does uh, disappoint. We may relook at this back through 3,000 on a stop loss basis, but for now um, we can't go into the meeting short stocks with such a terrible average, so we, we just killed it. Let's take a look at Euro here, hanging around 110. Um, basically, you know. We know he's going to cut something, either 10 or 20 basis points. The question is on the QE and the tiering. I'm pretty sure he has to tier rates uh, just from the pressure, political pressure around the world. Uh, the question will be what's he going to do QE if he does anything QE? No QE, which would be a disappointment and surprise. Uh, we break through this 110.80. We break through this. Uh, 111.16 and, and we're probably going to visit this 111.65 30, million, 30 billion in QE uh, is kind of I would say round expectation so let's say 10 and 30 is a very neutral today 10 and 20 is mildly slight disappointment but still you know we're not going to do much uh, so you can see there's a lot of different parameters you got to put in your head today uh, and then you got to look at the press conference to see what kind of forward guidance um, he gives us like effectively how dovish is this guy on his last meeting we think the market is way ahead of himself we don't think he's gonna go out with a boom some sort of dovish crazy boom which would kind of for us just reflect I think failure uh, for the ECB over his term basically a wildly dovish institution that has created no growth um, but no point in guessing really what you have to do is you know you have to walk into this with no bias you don't really care what he says right if he's massively dovish you'll have to smash this so if he goes 20 basis points and 60 QE this thing's going to go through through 109, um, 109.80, and then visit 
109.28, and then we're off to the races on on sort of a 60 QE and 20 basis points, and and then everything in between. So you got to walk into this. Our job is is uh, not to guess right on this stuff. Our job is to make money based on the information at hand. So spend the morning thinking about the numbers that you want to look at, um, the numbers that you think he's going to he's going to come up with, who is going to agree, and who is going to disagree uh, in the council. And then what he's going to say in the in the uh, press conference afterwards. And the reason you just need to go over on this head so you're not as reactionary. Um, you want to be as less reactionary as possible. You want to say, okay, I thought of that, and now I know what to do. Instead of saying, oh, this is what he's doing, now this is what I'm going to do. Anyway, kind of talking in circles here. Um, let's take a look at this dollar yen up through 108, up to 108.16. This, this looks fairly overextended to us now. There is support at, at uh, resistance at 108.40. Um, in the back of our minds, we're kind of like, gee, the uh, U.S. is about to cut rates next week. And I know ZN has paid, uh, and this has been a good trade. This looks like it's set to just continue with a waterfall down to um, another handle, down to 128.13. But dollar yen looks like it needs a pause to us. So if you are long, um, I would take some of this off the table, take some profit here, and reassess after ECB and then once ECB is over take a deep breath and think about now we're heading into FOMC season uh, how dovish is Powell going to be um, and does this justify dollar yen at 108 16 um, anyway 10840 is the first real resistance so we'll, we're not suggesting shorts here we're just suggesting caution uh, with longs let's go to Boone's 174.02. This is going to be a wild one today. Again, it's, it's you know, how bearish is he going to be? We don't think um, this has much of a chance to get above 175 today, actually, because we kind of think that uh, this 60 basis points in Boone's minus 60, which is here, is going to be support in the yield. So especially if he comes out with some sort of 10 and 30 there's going to be some you know intra hour volatility in boons but we don't think boons are going to collapse also because if he does go uber dovish here um, mm -hmm. at some point there is a risk of inflation but also uh, he's going to be putting pressure in his press conference for fiscal um, fiscal help and fiscal help uh, means more supply and fixed income. More supply means lower prices, higher yields. So boons should be a little bit less volatile um, than euro. If he really disappoints with no QE, um, boons are going to go a lot higher, uh, maybe all the way up to 40 basis points uh, over a two-day period. So. These are the parameters you have to have in your mind. Not really too much else to say here. Um, you know, you can kind of pick your poison. What are you comfortable with? Euro sterling technically through 89.05 is interesting. Euro yen getting a bit stretched. Doji yesterday, so you want to know these parameters, right? 16 was the high. Um, 32 was the low. And then, of course, euro dollar, which will be the most liquid. All of them are going to move. All the euro proxies are going to move. Now you just have to sit there and, and get ready for this. You have five hours. Uh, so run the what-if scenarios. And let's get ready. I think it's going to be a very, very wild uh, 
Thursday afternoon. A lot of people are confused about what he's going to do. There's there's a broad range of of basically possibilities from all of the banks and all of the hedge funds and all of the newspapers. So this usually means there'll be volatility because there's no consensus and there's no confusion. Um, people are just going to act now on what is said. Anyway, I will leave that with that. Not a lot to sink your teeth in with this video, uh, this European Open, because the whole day revolves around the European afternoon. Heads up if you're trading Turkey at noontime, and then otherwise, uh, let's get ready for um, the big, the big uh, Thursday afternoon. Good luck out there, people. Let's make some dough today. It's going to be a wild one. Catch you all tomorrow. Ciao.